Hello and welcome to Auten Math. In this edition of Auten Math, we're going to talk about measurement of segments and angles. Okay, measuring angles. How do you measure an angle? Well, in this class in geometry, we're going to measure angles in degrees. Now we could measure angles in radians as well, but we're going to leave that for you for next year in Algebra 2 trig. A portion of a degree is going to be called minutes and seconds. So we know from uh, our timetables that 60 minutes comprise one degree. 60 minutes are in one hour, and one hour is equivalent to one degree when we're measuring angles. We also know that 60 seconds comprise one minute. So if I wanted to speak in terms of the number of seconds in one degree, I would multiply 60 minutes times 60 seconds. That would mean in one degree there is 60 minutes, and there are 3,600 seconds, or 60 minutes times 60 seconds. Now we can write degrees in a fraction as well. I could say 30 degrees, 30.52 uh, degrees, or I could write it in degrees, minutes, and seconds. So what we want to do is learn how to convert back and forth between a fraction of a degree the fraction that's represented in minutes and seconds as well. So we're going to take a, there are three problems that we're going to work on. The first is to convert degrees only to degrees, minutes, and seconds. The next is to convert degrees, minutes, and seconds to degrees only. And then the third part is to subtract one from the other. So here I have a problem and it's in, I have a, an angle measure, it's 73.29 degrees and I want to convert it to degrees, minutes, and seconds. Well, I know 73 degrees is just 73 degrees. What I need to figure out is what fraction or portion of a degree, 0.29 is, as represented in minutes and seconds. Well, I know that one degree is equal to 60 minutes. So 0.29 degrees is equal to some fraction or some portion of 60 minutes. So 0.29, I set up my ratio, 0.29 is equal to x over 60 minutes. And I find out that 29 degrees is equal to 17.4 minutes. Well, here again, I have a problem because I'm still left with some type of decimal. I want to get rid of the decimal and have a result that's in degrees, minutes, and seconds. So I have 17 minutes, 17.4 minutes. Well, I know that 0.4 minutes is some fraction of 60 seconds because every minute has 60 seconds. 0.4 minutes is going to end up having 24 seconds. So again, I set up my ratio. 0.4 is equal to x over 60 seconds. And I find out that x in this case is going to be 24 seconds. So my result is that 73.29 degrees as a fraction, or with a decimal, is equivalent to 73 degrees, 17 minutes, 24 seconds, using degrees, minutes, and seconds. Okay, second part of my problem is to convert, now I have degrees, minutes, and seconds, I want to convert it to degrees only. So there are a couple different ways to do it. My suggestion is uh, to take the degrees out. So now I know that I have 73 degrees. What I need to focus on is the 45 minutes and 26 seconds, converting that portion into some value in degrees. So my suggestion is that we convert everything to seconds. So I know that 45 minutes is the equivalent of 45 times 60 seconds in seconds. So for every minute, there's 60 seconds. So I'm going to convert 45 degrees, 26, 45 minutes, 26 seconds to seconds only. So I multiply 45 times 60, and then I add 26, and I get 2,726 seconds as 45 minutes and 26 seconds. I place that all over 3,600 seconds. Now remember, 3,600 seconds from our first slide is representative of one degree. I end up with 0.757 degrees. So my answer now, uh, as I convert 73 degrees, 45 minutes, 26 seconds to degrees only, will be 73.757 degrees. Last part is asking us to subtract the second value from the first value and to represent uh, the answer both in degrees only and degrees, minutes, and seconds. Well, if you recall from your fourth grade adding and subtracting longhand process, you know that if you have a value that you're subtracting from another value, and that original value is larger than the value you're subtracting from, 
then you need to put the larger, the absolute value, larger value on the top. So in the case for B, we had a result of 73.757 degrees. And what we wanted to do originally was to subtract that from 73.29 degrees. But because this second value is larger, we need to place it on top, and then assign a negative sign to it. So when we subtract the two, I end up with 7. And I'm going to carry 6 for negative 0.46 degrees. OK, because I started with a negative value here. So negative 0.467 degrees is my answer in degrees only. If I express it in minutes, again, I'm doing the same thing, putting the larger value on top, even though it's a negative value. And I have two seconds. And here I have 28 minutes and zero degrees. And again, assigning the negative sign. So I'm left with 28 degrees, or 28 minutes, two seconds, which is equivalent to uh, 0.467 degrees. So negative 0.467 and negative 28 minutes, two seconds is your answer. OK, let's move on. And we're going to talk, talk about types of angles. So there are four different types of angles, um, basically four different types of angles. There's an acute, right, obtuse, and straight. An acute angle is an angle whose measure is less than 90. So it's going to be between 0 and 90 degrees, but not equal to 0 or 90. A right angle is an angle whose measure is exactly 90 degrees. So in this case, x is equal to 90. An obtuse angle is an angle whose measure is greater than 90 degrees. We're going to say it's between 180 and 90 degrees. And a straight angle is an angle whose measure is equal to 180 degrees. Right, last part, congruence and equality. Let's talk about the difference between congruence and equality. Congruent angles and segments are angles and segments with the same measure. So a congruent angle, a congruent segment, are angles and segments with the same measure. The congruent symbol is identified by an equal sign with a little squiggly on the top. So there's a little squiggly line on the top. So equals plus a little squiggly hat. Now congruence talks about the physical properties of the angle or segment. So if I said that specific angle um, or the corner of a house was congruent to another corner of a house, I'm talking about the physical property of the angle or segment. Equality talks about the measure of the angle or segment. So in the case that I'm given here below, AB, segment AB and segment CD, I would say segment AB is congruent to segment CD, but the measure of segment AB, which is 4, is equal to the measure of segment CD, which is also 4. So again, the two segments are congruent, or angles are congruent, if the measure of the length of the segments is going to be equal.